Welcome to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. In today's video, we're going to be using our Old Country Smoker, and we're going to be smoking up a front quarter of a trad hunting successful deer hunt. So let's get to the video. Again, thanks for tuning in to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. Today, we're going to be going through the process of what we do when we've got a quarter that we want to smoke. We're going to run over into the wood shop kitchen real quick and go ahead and show you what we're going to be doing to prep this front quarter. And we're going to get this cleaned up, prepped, and ready to put on the smoker. A lot of this skin will rip off just like ripping off part of that skin off of the back of a sack of ribs. The silver skin. The more of that silver skin you can get off, the better your meat's going to taste. It's not going to be as gamey. Basically, it's just a membrane that wraps around the muscle, and sometimes it leaves a little bit of a gamey taste. The best way to get a grip on it, I found, is use a paper towel. Just now, we're going to be doing basically just like we would if we was doing ribs. We're going to use a mustard for a binder on this. One of the advantages of, of actually butchering your own meat versus taking it to the shop and having them do it, I don't know if you can tell, but down here on the end where this leg ends, that meat has been separated at the joint. It wasn't cut through with a bandsaw. You're going to see a lot of guys that process, especially your commercial processors, that will actually run a deer through their grinder and the bandsaw and everything just like they would beef. The problem with that is it's not beef and you're going to get some of that gamey taste from the bone and the marrow when it's all run through the same process. If you're wondering what we're using for the rub today, we're actually using some Omaha Steak seasoning got this free from them so we're going to try it out we're going to put it on the ribs today and the chicken and just give it a try we've already got the smoker going outside we'll be using a combination of oak and pecan for this smoke today Probably one of the most overlooked and common mistakes when cooking venison is people will try to cook it like beef. That's one of the great things that I love about having the smoker. If you'll notice, we got our temperatures down on the lower end of what you would normally use when you're smoking pork or beef or anything else. But a good way to make sure that your venison turns out correctly is do it low and slow, even if you're doing it on the grill. But today on the smoker, it's just gonna make it that much easier because we're gonna go low and slow. If you guys have been watching our channel for a long time, then you, you know that this smoker is actually pretty old. It's got some age to it. And I frequently get people ask me, hey Dale, how do you keep your smoker looking so good? What are you doing for treatment? Guys, I always keep a bowl of extra French fry grease laying around. And you want to do this when your smoker's warmed up, not when it's cold, but it will actually kind of bake in just similar to cast iron now guys i understand this isn't cast iron so i'm not going to pretend it is but there is some similar characteristics to both metals but if you'll brush that in i've just got an old paintbrush and i keep the grease handy and every time you're out here and you've got this thing warmed up just go ahead and put another coat on it it really really helps if you guys have got it your smoker covered Congrats, I'm proud and happy for you. I don't have a cover for this one, so it sits outside most of the time. And as you can still tell, it's still not, it's not rusting up, guys. It's because I take good care of it. I need this thing to last me the rest of my life. So that's just another pro tip. When you're out here and you're looking for something to do anyways, go ahead and put another coat of oil on it.
<laughs> That's good. If you guys haven't ever had the twice baked smoked potatoes with some cheese and bacon on it, guys, you're missing out. Got the internal tips up to the perfect. So let's just take a bite and see what the tastes like. Oh yeah. Venison's coming off next. If you guys have never had a venison shoulder, smoked it up yourself after a good trad hunt you don't know what you're missing this is delicious hmm perfect like I said when you're cooking your venison do it real slow I'd rather cook it slow but this is just I mean falling part tender some of the best meat you can have just gives you a special feeling when you know you got it with your trad bow. My goodness, this is good, guys. I wish, I wish you could taste it. But thanks for joining us in our video. If you like our video, please give us a big thumbs up. We appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. As always, may you have a blessed week. We'll be posting our videos from the public hunting lands that we hunted this year in Oklahoma. So again, guys, if that's something that interests you, please give us a big thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on next week's video. We're going to start publishing successful hunting on public land. One of the things that I want to talk about real quick, and it'd be a good tip for you, is something that some of you may or may not already know, but you're going to be tempted to go ahead and put your thumb thermometer in the meat and here's the problem guys a lot of times there's going to be bacteria on the meat and you do not want to be injecting that what's on the outside of the meat that could eventually be cooked off you don't want to be pushing that into the interior of the meat where you may be more at a medium cook or a medium rare especially so don't be tempted when you first throw your meat on the grill to put the thermometer in because it's just not a good time to do it we are essentially going to be doing a 3 2 one cook on our venison along with the ribs. So for me, it's not even going to play a role in putting a thermometer in to check the meat temperature until after we've got at least bare minimum the three hours cook on the outside. And typically I won't even do it until after the two is over. So on the 3 2 one if you're not familiar, you're going to smoke the meat for three hours, wrap it for two hours, and then bring it back out. That last hour is basically just to crisp up the outside so that it just has a much better texture to it. But again, don't be tempted to put your thermometer in the meat right off the bat because you could be injecting harmful bacteria that would otherwise cook off the outside of your meat from the meat market or, or just basic handling in, in general. And you're gonna be shoving it inside the meat. So don't do that, guys. <laughs>